Hello, it's Pete here again, and we are heading towards the festive season. Um, I love Christmas. I've said it, there you go. I do, I love Christmas, I adore everything about it. But one of the highlights as a maker is Tim Holt's Christmas collection. Now, we've made some stuff, but very kindly, some of Tim's makers have sent the things that they made for his presentation. And if you wanna see or hear a bit more about these makes and a lot more besides, go across to Tim's website. That's timholtz.com. And Tim will take you through all the different dyes and all the techniques used. But I'm just gonna show you some of them. And we're gonna show you I'm going to do a make at the end and I'll show you where I've drawn inspiration from these wonderful, wonderful makes. So first up, and incidentally, if I get some of the names wrong, the pronunciation, please forgive me. I hold my hands up, my bad. Now, this one, I, I, I adore this one because I love tags. Tim loves tags. This is by Nathifa and look at the selection of tags here, but it's so clever the way that she's got the gold running through there. There's lots of different die cuts. We've got the modern festive, we've got the Christmas cutouts, we've got the framed tags. Lots, oh goodness, look at that, look at that. And there's the, there's the tree rings with, again, with the bold text Christmas here. Again, bold text Christmas. Use it in positive and in negative. That's just a really, really cool make. Um, another one, Banathy, but this one, wow. This is good, there's so much going on, but nothing's fighting. Nothing's fighting, everything. This is bow tied, this lovely die set. We've got one of the frame tags again. And you've got all that detail in the background, detail in the foreground, but it really, it just works. Uh, lovely, rich, retro Christmas colors. And there you can see there's the back of our envelope. Just imagine, imagine getting that through the post. I would stick it in a padded one, but I wouldn't send that uh, necessarily through the post. But wow, imagine that turning up at your house, honestly. Uh, this one's by Colbert, and lots of cool technique. Uh, that, this is a 3D embossing folder in the back. Hard to believe, really is hard to believe. It is so, so super detailed. So kudos to Tim for designing it and Ryan for actually bringing that to life. We've got the lovely modern festive there in the center. This is just a few of several different, um, different die cuts from that set. And of course, the bold text at the bottom. Lots of technique going on there. Really cool make. Uh, I'm gonna take another one of Kulba's. This is, this is a lovely, and it really, lots of mixed media work going on. We've got crackle paste in the background. We've got inks in the foreground with it. We've got that lovely sort of church window. That was a big style from a couple of years back, if memory serves. Uh, just a really, really nice make. Um, and I'm just, I m admire the amount of technique and the amount of time and passion and attention to detail that has gone into this make. That is really cool. Now. These are made by an old friend of mine. This is Kath Stewart, wonderfully talented maker. Uh, very, very talented. Um, lover of all things Tim Holtz. And you can see that from the pattern that goes into these makes. We've got the pine branches embossing folder in the background. We've got one of twig and stump. I'm not sure which one's which, but uh, you, you can apply your own names to those. Um, really cool, the inking, uh, just everything sits together. Those greens, those reds, kind of setting it off. Really cool, we've got winter wishes there. That's a lovely tag. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And again, the pine branches, the 3D embossing folder comes in at the top there. We've got the winter wishes. And look at the different, look at the different ways that you can, you can use the aspects of these snowmen. They can be looking left or right. They can be looking up. They can be looking down. And that's what makes them so special because you can create scenes with these. So, so, so creative. There's so many things that you can do with this twig and stump set that really are gorgeous. And you see the contrast between the two guys there, but these, these two look lovely together. And then finally, Harvey. Now, Harvey, Harvey, I know, I know we uh, talked about it. He's a colorize. Now, this is just one way of using Harvey. 
Wow, uh, as a that, that is just so wonderful. Not just not just the colours that Kat's chosen, but the stamping in the background and the way that Harvey sort of jumps out at you. This lovely, lovely. Now this is a guardsman, obviously, um, but you know you change the colours, you change the style, you change the detailing. There's so many little elements in this set, uh, unbelievable. So that is a spectacular make. Thank you, Kath. That's really cool. Let's move on to something slightly more dimensional, and this is Kathy Cowles. Um, and Twig and Stump, these two characters, and they are characters, um, and just giving them the name, Twig and Stump, it kind of brings them to life, doesn't it? I'll tell you something else that brings them to life. How about that? Whoa, it's lit up. That is so cool. Unbelievable, unbelievable. But this is Twig and Stump, um, all the gifts, this Winter Wishes, that comes with the set. The die cuts at the top, this is from the Yuletide set. We'll be seeing that a little bit later on, but I'm, I'm gonna turn this off before I put it down. Um, really nice, really nice. Now, I've got one here, again, by Kathy Cowles. This I love, because I love retro Christmas. I love that 1950s, 1960s feel. Not only have you got retro Santa on the front, and there are, there's very few dies in this set, but it's so cool, so much you can do with it. But inside, when we open that gorgeous, gorgeous box, look at all these tags, different Santas, different colors. We've got the trees from the Twig and Stump set. Just, wow, there's so much going on there. The framed tags, this set, framed tags, Go and watch Tim's presentation. He will explain all about how these work. Um, because they're not just tags, they are much, much more. And that is, again, by Kathy Cowles. Thank you for that, Kathy. Thanks. Really, we really do appreciate sending these in because uh, we makers, when they came in, we opened the box, we were very excited. And it's nice to see them close up and touch them and feel them and see the gorgeous techniques that have gone into making these. Now, this one's by Juliana and. It's, it's one of my favorites, it really is, because, because of the simplicity and the way that this lovely, the way that this gorgeous, and this is brushstroke Christmas. I think it's brushstroke Christmas, is that what it's called? Or oh, Christmas, holiday, holiday brushstroke. Apologies, holiday brushstroke. Um, so yeah, this is another of the brushstroke dies. It works with the previous brushstroke family, so they'll all sit together stylistically. We've got that lovely, now this is this is one die from a set of two. It's called a layered plaid. Um, and she's used it beautifully, that, that gold in the background, that, that opulence, but that lovely inked background. Everything works, everything balances. Really, really cool. Now, I'm gonna go on something slightly larger, and this one was designed by by Sharon and it's it's got these lovely pine branches going on this remember I said about the Yuletide set that's a colorized gorgeous really really cute you've got the bow you've got the bell you've got this lovely garland and all the berries that is a labor of love and hello who's this peeping through the window it's our old friend retro Santa really cool I love that I love that let's um, let's bring in a few more now this one this one's by Vicky and this one's quite subtle, so she's kept it to the, this, this lovely kind of worn old paper kind of look. She's used reds quite prominently, but she's also used this lovely uh, pine cone. Now the pine cones, it's all actually called pine patterns. And what they do, they don't cut anything out, but you ink them up and they make an impression in the card and also transfer the ink. So that, that's, quite a, that's quite a neat, um, die set right there but it's not a die in the sense that it cuts but again go to Tim's website for a better illustration where I'm sure he will tell you exactly how they work same with the frame tabs you ink the edges before you die cut and you get that wonderful effect really cool thank you Vicky um, this one is also by Vicky, and this is using Christmas cutouts, which is one of my favorite sets from the, I love them all, but this is one of my faves. And she's actually, she's used acrylics over metallics and kind of rubbed it away. So you're getting that worn, tattered metal look. Really neat, and I mean, you hard, you'd be hard pressed to say that it wasn't metal, it really, and she's used these lovely brands and everything. And of course, the tree rings embossing folding in the background. Really cool, loving it. Now, 
Sean, again, she has used that lovely layered plaid. Now that layered plaid, again, we get the two layers. Use some gorgeous, gorgeous metallics there. But she's kept it simple. She's just used, created the background with those. And then she's used some of the dies from the Christmas cutouts set for those gorgeous sentiments. And again, it's all about balance. It's all about keeping it simple. There's a lot of detail, but using the right colors, using the right tones, so, so important to make these work. And they, they certainly do. Thank you for that. Then this, this is one of my favorites. This is by Vicky. And I love the muted color palette. Again, the layered plaid in the background, very muted, it sort of sits back there. And she's used the, uh, it's the modern festive die set on the front. All these lovely little, uh, well, little, what would you call them? Die cuts, little die cuts. But there are some motifs, there are so many different ones in that set. So there's a lot of creative potential just in that set. And this is just some of them. So last but not least, I wanna look at, these are by Juliana. And the gorgeous tags. But what she's done, she's used the, uh, the Christmas bowl tech set, and there are eight different dies in that set, and she's made little shaker tags. Isn't that clever? But the lovely inking on the background, she's also used the frame tags, she's used some stamping, and of course she's used the pine patterns as well. But this is really not, I'm shaking it, I know that it just looks blurred on camera, but they're just gorgeous. I love those, the green, red, and blue. Doesn't that just scream Christmas? Um, so we did draw a lot of inspiration from these. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna be doing a make with them in a second. But before we do, let me just show you some of the things that I made for our photo shoot here. Okay, so here's some of the ones that, um, that I made for our photo shoot. And this one, obviously we've used the pine branches, 3D folder in the background. We've also used the holiday brush stroke there. there those lovely, not just the flower itself, but the lovely fronds and foliage that come with it. And there is, uh, um, that is bold text Christmas. This is just one of nine different sentiments in that set. So very versatile. It's the sort of thing you bring out every year. This is, this is a real investment for the future because you don't only get the negatives, you also get the positive as well. So you can use the letters or you can use the negative. It's entirely up to you. Um, next up, let's have a look. Another, another one with some inking techniques going on. Very simple, very subtle, lots of white space in there. So whereas Tim's Makers, uh, they use all those wicked techniques. Try to, I try to sort of reined it in with these so we get that nice contrast. Um, but this one is Christmas cutouts. It's almost got that kind of a, a really rustic kind of Scandi vibe going on there. Then let's take, oh, twig and stump. Twig and stump, how about that one? So that's another thing that you can do. You know, this one he's looking up. Maybe, maybe he's juggling snowballs, maybe he's juggling gifts. And again, this shows the, the, the ways that you can use these characters, not just about sticking a snowman on a card. Oh, no, 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 it is the gift that keeps on giving. And of course, we use the framed tag in the background there. Then a slightly smaller tag this time but I do like the colors. I like the contrast on this one. And this is from the modern festive set, which, uh, which is absolutely gorgeous. And because they're big, bold shapes, it's kind of a blank canvas for you, the maker, to apply your inks or your techniques to. Um, just really, really sweet. Now, let's look slightly more monochromatic. Now it's all about the colors of the cardstock and the simplicity and the beauty of the dies. And this one again, this is Christmas cutouts. You can see we used a very simple color palette here. So I've used the gold opulence from the Six range and some black card just against white. And it really does show off those gorgeous die cuts. Um, these, now these are the four. So you see, you can use the words, you can use the individual letters, or you can use the negatives. So we've created a nice little tree here. And again, these are colors from the Sizzix cardstock ranges, our color story. Let's take one which has a few sort of different die sets on this one against cream card. And again, Sizzix um, color story card. So we've got the layered plaid in the background. We've got the bold text here. And underneath that, we've got the modern festive. So nice bit of contrast there. An unusual color palette, but hey, says Christmas to me. That's all that matters. Now, 
Remember we talked about our Yuletide die set? This is a colorized die. Um, and we've carefully chosen some lovely greens there to get that balance. We've got the ribbon and we've used the similar colors for the berries as well to get that sort of uniformity. And bold text Christmas, there it is again. And this time I've used, I've used um, 3D pads so that light and shade are doing the trick there. So it's standing proud of the card below, even though they're the same color. Harvey, not quite as spectacular as cats earlier, but very, very simple, very clean, just cardstock, no inks, no techniques, just showing off the beautiful die cuts. And of course, Bold Text Christmas. Speaking of Bold Text Christmas, this one really takes it to the extreme. We've used that lovely bow tie die, and this shows it full size. That is the size of the die, should you wish to make a larger make like this. And then here we have in the back, and of course the bold text Christmas. Now the very the last one, uh, this one I've used, I've been quite heavy handed with the acrylics and the inks on this one. And this is Twig and Stump in all their glory. We've got the lovely trees which come with the set in the background. We've got some of the gifts which come with the set here as well. We've got the two wonderful characters themselves holding up this garland and the snowflakes and the stars again come with the set as does the Winter Wishes um, sentiment at the top. So that is kind of a snapshot of what you get. There's a lot more in the set besides, but um, Pretty cool, I'm sure you'll agree. Oh, and, and the base is, of course, that is our Tree Rings 3D embossing folder. So I'm gonna take, looking, talking about Tim's makers, as I said at the beginning, we did draw inspiration from them. Or we looked at some of the techniques they use. I'm gonna kind of put that together and create something for you now. So this, my good friends, is the Retro Santa set. As you can see, six dice in total. I'm not actually gonna be using this one this time and you, it'll become apparent as to why uh, when we go into it. So th this, this is the background. This is the one that would, be, that would be dark, but I'm not gonna use that one. So let's put that to one side. Um, I'm gonna be using some inking techniques and we'll talk about contrast because one of the things that you see with Tim's makers, even though they're very skilled with technique, they do get the contrast. So even though there's a lot going on, and this, this is a real skill, is balancing all those different textures, all those different colors, and get everything to stand out, to stand proud. Uh, we're gonna show, hopefully, hopefully, we're gonna show how to do that with, with this make. I'm also using Bold Text Christmas. And you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different dies. We've got Believe in the Magic. We've got You Be of Good Cheer. We've got Peace on Earth. We've got Happy Holidays, Joy, Jolly Holly, Winter Wishes, Merry and Bright, and Tis the Season. So. Not sure which one I'm using yet, but we're gonna be using one of them. Um, but let's get on with Santa. Now, I'm gonna start off. What I've done, see, I pre-inked a background. There's a bit of stamping going on there as well. And I've pre-inked this. So there's a bit of splattering and I've used, um, I've used old paper and antique linen just for that background. And rather than just using cream card for the detail, I Santa's beard and his hands and gloves and what have you, this is what I'm using in place of cream card. So, pop those to one side and I'm gonna create the red for Santa and that's what I'm gonna use this die for. We're gonna cut the centerpiece because we've got the dark in the background, we've got the red in the midground and we've got the cream or the white in the foreground. So, there's my card and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose three colors. Now, candied apple is a lovely, very red, red. It's in the middle of the spectrum, um, slightly, but on the darker side. Now, festive berries, this is a red with a little bit more pink. Gorgeous color. You can see the difference there, very subtle. Crackling campfire is almost in the orange camp, but it's a red. But you see, it's a red with yellow in it. And that's the difference. Some reds come from different sides of the spectrum. So. We've put those down there and I'm gonna spritz them. I'm gonna take 
This is my Timmy, Tim, Timmy, sorry Tim, Tim Holtz Distress Spray Vaporizer. Uh, very handy tool. It's one of my go-to tools actually. And this is, now it doesn't really matter which way up I do this, it's not important. But I'm gonna actually lay that into there, like so. And you can see the way that that color and the contrast between those reds. Let's pick up a bit more here bring in some of that orange. So I'm going for the contrast. I'm going, I'm trying to get those, pick those different reds up there. Um, now, the, I am using my, my um, Sizzix Media Mat here. The beauty of this Media Mat is that once, once you've inked, you can just take some kitchen paper or whatever you use and just wipe it away. And I haven't even used any water there. Now it's a silicon media mat, of course, so the great thing is I can use a heat tool on top of that as well, if I wish. But before, before I do, no, I'm actually gonna dry that. Not completely. And there we are. So that's, that's not bone dry, but it's where I want it to be. And I'm gonna bring in some spiced marmalade. Let's cut that across the center, but I'm gonna spritz that. And rather than just let it lie there like that, I'll use my palette knife and I'll spread that out just a little bit before dipping that in. So I want that to sink in to those reds. We'll get a bit more paper, clean that away. So I'm going for the contrast, I'm going for the different reds. I don't just want, you could have just a red, that's fine, that's absolutely fine, a block red. But here, I've got a bit more going on, more than meets the eye. Let's take festive berries again. Let's take festive berries, run that down the center. So there's no, there's no right or wrong about these. You're just kind of making it up as you go along. What looks right, you could keep going on with this all day, you could change it, you could spritz it, you could bring in some more inks. It's entirely up to you. There are no hard and fast rules. Just have fun, just explore, experiment, see where it takes you. And hey, you know what? Doesn't work out, flip it over, start again. Easy. So there, now, one last thing, one last thing. I'm gonna take this spiced marmalade, Again, rub it onto my media mat, spritz it, and finally pick some up with my palette knife. I'm gonna flick that all over so it's not dry yet, so I'll get a very different effect. But this orange is gonna settle into and over that red, and we're gonna get a nice sort of contrast going on. So let's clean that up. Again, start with a completely clean media mat. And there we have it. Now I could splatter on a darker color. We could get some dark brown speckles going on. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. I'm actually going to leave it, but let's, let's dry that off. So you can see the contrast here. You can see the difference, the, the different colors, the pinky red coming through at the top, the true red down there, where that crackling campfire, that, that orangey red comes in. And now I'm gonna choose how I'm gonna lay my Santa on this. And I think, I think I'll start, mm, I wanna get that color in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with him there. But what I wanna do, now if you can imagine this is our Santa, and the light is coming in this direction. So I'm gonna deepen the color around this edge. And to do that, this time, I'm gonna pick up an old favorite of mine. This is aged mahogany. So I like this against red. You could use vintage photo. You could use whatever, whatever you want. But just by bringing this around the edge, like so, that's gonna kind of deepen that. So it's gonna give me that contrast that I'm looking for. So we have, once that's done, let's just spritz that lightly. There we have, we got some nice speckles going on there. And spritz where the inking was. Now you don't you don't have to you don't have to clean that away. You could actually you can actually dip your card in that as well if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that today, but I'm just spritzing it so I can start with a clean media mat. There we are. 
but again those speckles let the water seep into this let it do its job now you can dry this you can let it dry naturally you can use some kitchen paper to actually lift that off to get greater contrast which is what i'm doing here and then finally i'll bring in my heat tool one last time So you know what, you know, Tim, Tim is the master of these techniques, all these inking techniques. He, he devised them, he developed them, he perfected them. Uh, this is just an homage from me, but this is kind of what I'm looking for. So let's bring Santa, pop him in the corner and let's see where that takes us because I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in my big shot fold away. This is my Tim Holtz big shot fold away. Uh, favorite machine, a favorite machine of Josh's. This is this is Josh's go-to machine, the fold away. So I'll make my sandwich and run it through. You just need to run it through the ones. That clicking, incidentally, that's perfectly natural. So if you're new to die cutting, you think, ah, oh, he's broken it. No, not at all. That you get when, when the die is kind of parallel to the roller. Perfectly natural, doesn't harm the machine, the plates, or the die. So let's take that out of the way. And this is my, and you know what? To get that die cut out of there, I'm gonna reach down and get my Tim Holtz tool case. Let's take, take the ones I need. I'm sure, yes, I've got a die pick in there. Oh, there we are. So many, so many bits and pieces. There, there's my die pick now. Just pop the top off there. And this is what I shall use to get those lovely little pieces out using the fantastic pokey holes and oh look it's all done for me it's all in the die of course when when it's when those little pieces are embedded in the die simply poke from this side and there we have it good to go ready to fight another day and there's my die all clean just the eye detail we'll pump that to one side that that isn't that so much more interesting than just cutting out a plain old red card, which has its charms. But um, and can, you see, can you see about the edge, what I was saying, about where, where I darkened the edge? So if the light's coming from this direction, see how that works? Cool. Right, now, we've got some other bits and pieces here. I'm gonna bring in my machine again, because at the beginning I was talking about this piece of card which I inked earlier. And this is for the details, so there's the belt and the buckle. And we'll try and get some interesting, some interesting pieces. And that's the beauty of this. You, you can choose, you can choose where you want to do that, what you want, what you want to get. Um, there's Santa, Santa with his beard. We'll pop all those on there, wind it through. And again, this time you see, there isn't the crackle because we didn't have it. alongside the roller there we are I'll run that through I put it through twice you don't need to you can just once would would be ample uh, with with dies like this because they're not what we call ultra detailed so let's take those to one side let's pop my machine over there and let's bring them onto my media mat now this is the buckle and you can see, again, we've got some contrast. We've got some detail in there. It's, again, it's a little more interesting than just using plain old cream card. Although, in a moment, I will show you an example using plain old cream card as well. But those speckles, those splatters, wow, really make it something special. Then we'll take hand number one and hand number two. Now. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna apply a little distress ink around the edges. And it's not to provide contrast because I don't really need contrast because I'm putting it a light shape over a dark. But what it will do, it will make it slightly more dimensional. And I'm taking antique linen. Now antique linen and old paper are two, two of my favorites, but the antique linen, it's slightly warmer. And what this will do, it will make the flat shape, I'm hoping, it will make that flat shape a bit more rounded by just providing a little warmth 
around the edges. And this is the sort of thing that really, you really start to see the benefits when you put the whole thing together. There we are, so there's one. And then second, now I want you to look at that. And then once I've done the inking, we'll have a look in a second. And see the contrast, see the difference between the two. It just gives it a lovely warmth and rounds it off beautifully. So there we are, and the belt buckle. Now the retro Santa, I know that Tim was saying when he did his presentation, it, it, it reminds him of a sort of, say, a, an advertising sort of Santa from, from years back, maybe the 40s and 50s. But it's, I think, particularly when you, when you get to my age, you know, we, we look back at Christmases gone by and some of us still have the original baubles that maybe our parents and grandparents had that we bring out every year to, to dress the tree. Um, and some of those baubles are wrapped in old newspapers from goodness knows when, or just from, from Christmas wrapping paper left over. And it's lovely to open that box every year and it gives you, gives you a wonderful warm feeling. So there we are, we've got, speaking of warm, we've got that warmth going on around the edge. And if you can see, you can see here the difference that that makes to those pieces. It really does, and again, so much more interesting than just plain old cream. Now, pop the inks to one side because we're gonna to start to put this together. But I'm gonna start with the background because, and the reason that I did the deep dark color at the bottom is that when, when you place this here, so that dark color is kind of like the belt across the middle of Santa's tummy. So um, let's take some, I think we'll use some PVA glue and just apply a little around the edges. Make sure we get that stuck down firmly in place and get it right into the corner. So there we are. And you can see the, the contrast between, between the lighter color and the deep red, the contrast between the dark color there. We'll bring some more PVA, but what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna make a scribble on my craft mat, and that's, that's what I prefer to do. I, rather than apply these to fine die cuts, I like to make that scribble and actually dip the die cuts into them. So I'm using my, my Tim Holtz tweezers here and we'll start off with this hand. So we'll dip that in there. And now one of the interesting things, I, I don't think I, I talked about this when I die cut it, but not only does it cut, it actually has these lines etched in there. So that tells you exactly where your die cuts need to go. It's a really clever system. So it kind of embosses them in and it's there done for you. So it takes away that, that guesswork somewhat. There we are. So there's glove number one. I'm gonna leave his face and beard till last. That's sort of the, uh, the piece that really does bring it all together. Then we've got the glove. There's number two, the belt and uh, the belt buckle and trim, which is number three. And then finally, it already looks like Santa, but this one, this one, this one will top it all. So there we are. Just dip that in there. Make sure I get it in exactly, exactly the right place. And I can do that easily, as I said, because of those wonderfully embossed lines. Uh, just bring that down slightly, a bit more. Wow, how about that? Really cool, and, and that's the, obviously, you know, we've used, we've used inks this time. There are so many techniques we can use. I'm gonna show you some examples in a second of uh, other things that we can. But before that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a technique, something that I, that I particularly like to do, uh, especially with, with Christmas makes. So I'll bring my Sizzix cutting mat in there. You see, this is curved because I lent it up against the wall, which is a silly thing to do, folks, but hey, it's as good as new. I'm putting that there. Now, 
I know it's with, with some of the makers, there's some lovely stitching on the cards, which is great, but I'm not gonna get my sewing machine out today. I'm actually gonna use this, and I used this in a, in a vlog recently as well. Um, it's a technique I used to use a lot, and I've sort of re, uh, not rediscovered it, but re-loved the technique. And this is called a pattern maker's wheel. And this is something that people who uh, are into their stitch craft will know all about. But it has these teeth. And what it does, if I run this around the edge, I don't, I don't need to take a ruler as a guide. That's okay, I'm just gonna run that and across all those lovely die cuts. So already, already you can see that. That's a really cool effect. But what I wanna do is take a fine marker, a fine black marker or, or a brown or a gray. And I'm just gonna, and I'm not taking any care. In fact, the more imperfect it is, the more realistic it looks. Look, I missed a bit there, but it looks like my, my machine has skipped a stitch or something. Um, so you just wanna run that over those holes, which you cut with the wheel, and kind of just back and two, not in a straight line. I'm going back and two, back and two, back and two. Um, the less care I take, the more imperfect it is, the more authentic it looks. Um, and it's just a cool technique when you, when you don't want to break out the sewing machine or you haven't got the right color thread in it. There you go. Now, one last thing. I was going to, I was going to use this. I was going to pop that there. Should, I, should we pop it there or which should we have? Tis the season, merry and bright, winter wishes. I'm going to go with winter wishes on this one and it's going to go over the top. Now what I could do, I could die cut this separately, no problem. Um, but what, but I'm actually going to cut it. So I want the aperture. So it's all about the negative die cuts rather than the letters themselves. So put my cutting mat to one side, then sandwich this between the plates. And you can see it's slightly, slightly at an angle there, slightly offset. And we'll run that through. Um, so I'm not gonna run it all the way through. So that's taking my die and then run it back. And let's see where that's got us. Wow, how about that? Pop straight out, really clean. But you know what? Don't throw those letters away. There's lots of lots of really cool stuff going on with those letters. So, so keep them, keep them. Use them, use them on your next card. So work, think ahead rather. So there you go. We got some gorgeous, gorgeous letters there. So we got the positive and the negative. Now, last but not least, I want to get the contrast. So I'm going to pop it just onto this ivory card here and I'm going to use Sizzix tape runner along all four sides a bit across the top and finally down there maybe a little bit across the middle as well put that now I'm going to put this slightly off center there we are it's off center because I think Santa's had a couple of sherries. Um, but there we are, and that's it. Uh, you know, really quick, having using those inking techniques, getting that lovely contrast, it does show a bit more detail. Uh, this is one that I did. This is uh, this is a tag using using the framed tag set or one of the frame tag set. There are diff three different sizes of tags. Again, similar sort of color scheme going on there as well. Then how about this? This this is acrylics. This is a brayed acrylic. So I actually brayed the color on there. You can see different shades, similar kind of thing, but rather than do, do the cream, which was obvious for the beard, I chose, I chose a sort of a light sort of flesh pink there with a little bit of um, ivory over the top and some splattering as well. So that's another one. Here we go. More inking this time. And again, using the Boltex, so we're using the same, uh, we're using the same sort of thing. And this was one of the one of the makers. I saw something. I saw the yellow coming in, and I thought, oh, candlelight! How wonderful! So we use the sort of the candlelight on the edge of the beard and the hands and so on and so forth to sort of as if the light is coming from this point, merry and bright. See what I did there? Bright. So that's where the light is flooding that one. Then 
talk about just plain old card. Well, that's the test of a great die set, that is, quite frankly. And this is using some of our Sizzix Festive cardstock. Um, uh, alongside the ivory, which comes from a uh, neutral range, but that 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 shows what a, what great shapes they are. What a great little set of die cuts this is. That it doesn't need anything. Just sometimes the right colours of card. And then finally, we've used some pattern paper. So these are pattern papers. You can see we've got a tartan in the background. We've got a wood effect there. A wood effect for the top. Um, so different cards. The same die sets. So it's the Bold Text Christmas, it's the Retro Santa, it is, and I know it's a terrible pun, it is the gift that keeps on giving. And then finally, that's what we made this afternoon. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for joining me. I, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you, thank you to all of Tim's talented, super talented making team for sending in your, your projects. It has been an inspiration. Uh, they've drawn quite a crowd in the office when we opened the box. So thank you all for sending those in. It really is wonderful. And thanks to Tim for the constant inspiration and his wonderful collections and these Everything we've seen today comes from the Tim Holtz Christmas range, which you can get. Check out the website and you'll see, or you could get them from your, from your retailers, of course. Uh, we'll be seeing lots more inspiration, uh, makes from Tim and from the rest of the Sizzix team. I know, I know that Josh is working away now using some of these dies as well, so, so keep your eyes peeled. I've been Pete and I will see you again soon.